It's a glorious day in the world of Magic the Gathering, as the heavens have just opened up, and down upon us has rained New Capenna spoilers and story. Magic. I am a wizard! History. I'm an old wizard! The Magic Historian. My bones hurt. Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. My friends, I hope the day finds you well because we have gathered to talk about what's going on with Streets of New Capenna. Wizards of the Coast has given us more spoilers today and more stories. In fact, there are now four story articles. There's a bunch of lore for Streets of New Capenna. So I have done two full videos covering all the lore up to date for Streets of New Capenna. The second one just came out about an hour ago. So you can find the link to that at the end of this video. But let's start out by diving in with the new charm that we're gonna be looking at today. So yesterday we had the Maestro charm. Today we have the Obscura charm. So this is one black, one blue, and one white for an instant that says, choose one. Return target multicolored permanent card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Whew, that's a wordy one. Counter target instant or sorcery spell or destroy target creature or planeswalker with mana value three or less. So this is obviously part of the charm cycle that we discussed yesterday. This is not the first time that we've seen charms of this nature. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, we saw it back in the invasion days. We saw it in the cons of Tarkir block. And this is the third visit that we've had to these sort of tricolored charms. Now I do like it when the different colors easily line up with different abilities and you have the same kind of thing going on here where the white ability is the first ability that returns a multicolored permanent card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. I do have to admit that when you choose that ability, it feels like you're paying a lot of mana for what you're getting. Three mana of three different colors just to be able to bring a permanent back from your graveyard that costs three or less doesn't feel that impressive for the mana considering that a lot of bring cards back from your graveyard style cards tend to cost four mana and don't have any restrictions. Four or five mana will get you a creature back from the graveyard with bonuses sometimes. So for one mana less, restricting it to a specific three color combination and requiring the mana value being three is pretty, pretty big in terms of the restrictions, right? So that's the white aspect of it. The blue aspect is obviously counter target instant or sorcery spell. And then the black aspect is destroy target creature or planeswalker with mana value three or less. So obviously if they just made a destroy target creature or planeswalker with no restrictions, this card would be too strong. You can smoke a planeswalker or a creature, counter any instant or sorcery, or bring a card back from the graveyard, I honestly don't feel like this charm is quite as exciting as the Maestro's charm that we saw yesterday. I do like the artwork on the different styles though, right? We have two of them here and on the one, you can see the Obscura symbol, which is a crazy, crazy insignia, right? It looks like a hand and in the palm of the hand, it looks like there's a keyhole and there's a dagger being inserted into the keyhole. So it's like, jab the mind's eye of your hand. I'm not 100% sure exactly what it's supposed to represent, which I guess kind of makes sense. It's kind of obscure for the Obscura. The Obscura are obsessed with sort of seeing into the future, right? They have a lot of diviners, seers. They're led by an actual sphinx who is super, super into getting all the knowledge they can. And I don't mean rumors. I mean full on solid knowledge. In the storyline, the second part of the storyline on the, one of the side stories, they actually talk about how all of these different seers under the Obscura are part of this massive network. And there's actually an attack on that network that basically blasts into the mind of every visionary and seer on the entire, well, not on the entire plane, in the entire city of New Capenna. I have no idea if it actually reached outside of the city. But that is one of the elements of the story that we're covering in the lore over on Fantasy Geographic. So you have this group that is about like finding that hidden knowledge and keeping secrets and everything like that. But I have to admit, like Obscura is the white, black, blue group, but they don't really feel 
particularly evil. Do you know what I mean? Like the broker group, they have some evil aspects to them. On the surface, they present themselves as individuals who are, hey, we're just trying to like help people out and we just give out these contracts that are perfectly legitimate. There's nothing wrong with them or whatever. Comes to find out that there are actually brokers out there who some brokers will just kind of show up when you're in a really bad spot and kind of force you into making a bad deal where it's like, sign this contract that's a bad deal and I'll get you out of this dangerous situation. You're in a house that's burning, no one's gonna save you. If you sign this, I'll get you out of the house. So people sign contracts, it's not under duress, but it's the closest thing, right? But on top of that, you actually have brokers who are forcing people into contracts, which seems pretty insidious, but I've seen nothing at all to show that the Obscura have any sort of evil element to them. And that kind of shows the way that magic has changed, sort of, when it comes to the color pie, right? Because the way it used to work was black meant that you were basically gonna be evil. Now it can be more selfish and disinterested in others, but it doesn't automatically equate to evil. And actually, if you think about the brass dragon that they just did, uh, like we just saw from the Commander Legend spoilers recently, that brass dragon was black. And a bunch of people had problems with that because they're like, metallic dragons are good. Why do you have a good creature in the evil color? But it's not, e black isn't an inherently evil color. And by just going in magic, white is the good guy color, black is the bad guy color, that is very stagnant and two-dimensional, right? And it doesn't represent reality. You can have people who are on the side of good, but are incredibly selfish and also motivated by their own goals. So they're doing good overall for people, but they're selfishly motivated. And that could be a white black character, that could be a white character, that could be a black character. It fits into different color identities. So the Obscura not automatically being inherently evil, to me, is a good step in the right direction to give the world more flavor overall and not just limit it by your color affiliations completely. You're not Peggy in a box that way, right? So with the artwork, you have the one here where you've got the obscure symbol being shown in a mirror with all these wisps of smoke kind of flowing around it in this dark fortune tellery kind of room. And then on the other obscure charm, you can just see the symbol put on the wall, looking very arcane. Or is that the floor actually? Never mind. I believe that's actually the floor with a number of supplicants kind of bent over it, tending to it. All right. Honestly, sometimes with these images, it's a little hard to make out. I might need glasses. <laughs> Anyways. I mentioned the Maestro Charm, and yesterday I only showed you guys one of them. So I'm gonna quickly pop the other Maestro Charm up on the screen since I somehow missed it in yesterday's spoiler video, probably because I got really hyped up and sucked into the storyline because I'm right in to what's going on in New Capenna. I'm really curious. Obnixilis is gonna try and take over the whole plane? He's gonna crash the party and try and steal the font? Get his hands on the halo? Apparently there is an angel, at least one angel hidden somewhere in New Capenna that's either helping or being used against their will. Who is outside of Capenna? Are there Phyrexians out there? Where are the Phyrexians? What about the statues inside of New Capenna that literally show angels and Phyrexians fighting each other. That all happens, by the way. Seriously, the lore is wild. So before I keep going on about that, let me share you with, with you one more cool thing. I'm a big fan of Johannes Voss's artwork. I don't even know how to pronounce his name right, but I know I love his art. So he made a shrine token. You'll see it up on the screen here right now. This is a lot of fun. Now, the reason the shrine token may be a little more relevant to people is because Wizards of the Coast made a big mistake with the original shrine tokens that we were supposed to be getting with the Kamigawa set, right? So as a result, those shrine tokens are exceedingly rare. You can see them being sold on the secondary market for 10, 20, $30, depending, right? It varies, but it's absolutely insane how the supply of this has been accidentally choked off. So Voss went ahead and made this token, which I believe is available through his Patreon. And I'm a huge fan, not only of his artwork, but specifically of that secret layer that he did, where you have, the, you have that priest and you have the angel and their young lovers, and and they're like running away together and there's this watermelon theme that's intertwined with it and he wrote poetry for the flavor text like the man 
is an absolute treasure and gift to Magic the Gathering. And when you read his posts in place like Reddit and stuff, you can tell he's just got a fun kind of spirit to him. So he ranks up there as one of my absolute favorite magic artists and if you go over there and get the shrine tokens from him make sure you tell him the magic historian sent you and he says hello now come on over to fantasy geographic and let me tell you all about what's going on with the new capenna lore there's crazy stuff going on in the story you really need to hear it thanks to my patrons now everybody click on the link right now and go check out the lore i'll put the second video up on the top and i'll put the playlist of both capenna lore videos on the bottom See you there.